Today's message was really about reinstilling hope in our capability to do good in our communities. I was here with a group of women, um, many of them who have been advocates not only in this in this city, in this county, but in this state for a number of women's issues. Um, a majority of the folks that were in this room today were 60 plus, um, but they're not done yet. You know, the women were telling me a lot of these issues that are happening right now with the Supreme Court don't impact me, but I care too much about the future um, of other women who are coming after me. And so it's, it's becoming personal for a lot of folks beyond the regular everyday issues that they're facing, because this is also a group that challenges with the lack of access to um, affordable health care services. This is also a group who's seeing their schools um, fall by the wayside. This is also a group who's seeing their kids leave the state and, and having their grandkids in other states and they have to commute to spend time with their families and, and they believe in Iowa and they want it to be the Iowa that they, they love and treasure for generations to generations to come. And today's message was, we're not done yet. We're not done yet, we've got more fight um, and, and we know that this state is worth fighting for so we're gonna put in the work. And one of the things you mentioned, the younger demographic not getting out to vote mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. On that key demographic right. that you think would lean a little for a Democratic candidate. Yeah, and they do. They, they do lean. But we have to meet them where they are. We, we can't expect that they are going to show up to the ballot box organically. We have to make those serious connections to help our young people understand that they're not alone in their line of thinking. And it's not, it's not a moment to give up hope. I'm reminded of the quote um, that Coretta Scott King said, the fight for freedom is never really won. You earn it and you win it at every generation. We, we as human beings, we have to fight for that freedom to ensure that it is kept sacred and made sacred. And uh, again, I, I, you heard me say it several times in this room today, it's not a matter of can we, it's are we willing. Our state constitution says in section two, all political power is inherent in the people. And the people have that opportunity right now in this election cycle to do something about the degradation that we're seeing happening throughout our state and our communities. And when it comes to people though, I mean, they do polls that show that more people are pro-choice mm -hmm. and you actually have a third of Iowans are independent. Mm -hmm. We um, are in a majority pro-choice state. And so uh, it, our, our current governor, uh, being proud about the decision that came out on Friday, is yet a, another signal to us that she is not concerned about doing what's best for all of Iowa. She is taking her calls from folks outside of this state and signing legislation and, and, and pushing movements that are of no value to this state. Uh, her message when she was loud and proud about that decision on Friday was not for us in Iowa. It was for whatever political positions that she wants to abide by, but it wasn't good for us. And, and so I'm of the mindset that our governor has got to be good for Iowa and focused on this state. And we have an opportunity to change uh, the position of our leadership right now by um, utilizing this elections process. And, and so that's, again, why I'm motivating folks that we can do this because uh, the vote is mighty. It is mighty. And our democracy only works if people participate. Uh, and I want to encourage everybody out there, despite where they may, how they may feel about the current political climate or their right to vote, that it is sacred, it is precious, and I want to hear their voice, whether they want to vote for me or not. I want to hear their vo voice because I'm, I'm a former basketball coach. I want the score to be fair. And the way the score is fair is we get as many pe people out there engaged in this process as possible. And what's the focus then for the next few months? Is that the focus? The focus is instilling that hope. And then we're also talking about the, the, the challenges that, that folks are experiencing and the things that we can do about it. So we look at our education system. This is a state that was once number one in education. And under this leadership, we've fallen farther and farther down the list, 18, 19, 20. And we know as Iowans, that's not where we belong. We know that's not where we belong. 
Uh, but needless to say, we also know we can get back there. We can improve our education system by expanding opportunities to early childhood education to three and four year olds. Uh, we can improve our education system by also ensuring that once our students graduate from high school that they're not only prepared to go to college or technical school, but if they just so happen to want to get a job after high school, if they just so want to happen to get a job, that should be accessible to them. And I only want them to have to work one job to make ends meet. How do we do that? We get the trades back into the school. Right now we need to fill 91,000 jobs today. Some of those jobs could be filled by our young people if we created the pathways for them to access the skills and the tools to get those jobs. Again, something basic and function, but it takes a collaborative effort to make it happen. It takes our education institutions, both public and private. It takes uh, it takes our unions. It takes um, our trades. It, 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 it takes a, a community, right, to, to, to resolve these challenges that Iowans are facing. But it also takes willpower to bring those communities together, to, to get down and dirty on how we, we actually fix these problems with the tools that all of us collect collectively bring to the table.